Good afternoon, everyone. Um, there were quite a few very good uh, talks before, and actually, I think that the ground is very well, well prepared for, for what I'm going to show. If I just could have it here, thanks. Thanks a lot. So I came to you from Cambridge University. I'm an operations director at the Cambridge University Psychometrics Centre, uh, which has a 30-year-long year experience in studying psychology of individuals and measuring psychological traits. As uh, you can probably imagine, I, I haven't been there for all this time. Uh, uh, I'm at the Psychometrics Centre for the last five years. Uh, I'm also working part-time uh, in Microsoft Research advising them on how to better understand their consumer, both in their online uh, systems and in the products they deliver to your desktops, uh, desktops or mobile. Uh, or mobile. Um, as a strategic network of Cambridge University, we have very extensive li links, both within the university and across the world, which gives me personally and us as a team very nice exposure to many good ideas and many good experts from different fields, starting from psychology, I'm a psychologist myself, uh, through machine learners, linguists, and ending really with engineers that are developing uh, the devices themselves. Um, so I think the lecture should, have a, should be framed, the message should be framed properly. And um, my most important message today to you guys is that your interaction to the consumers should be personal. I want to say it should be personal again. Uh, and as an example, I have this uh, chap here on the screen. As you can probably figure out, it's a, it's a used car, second car, car uh, second-hand car salesman here. And my degree in psychology was with special focus on marketing. And both social psychologists and marketers, uh, they really look with a certain reverence uh, towards good second-hand car, car salesmen. Those guys are really master psychologists. Well, actually, they kind of go extinct slowly. And now you go to auto trader uh, and buy your second-hand car if you actually do it uh, online. But those guys in the past, they would take the customer and very quickly go beyond their age, gender, and obvious affluence. They'll be like a master psychologist trying to deep, uh, dig deeper, trying to figure out what is their personality, what is their intelligence, how happy they are, what are their motives, goals, and so on. And then they crafted the message in such a way that at the end, after they bought this Vauxhall, second-hand uh, Vauxhall, uh, they were just uh, the most happy consumers in the world. And in digital, in early years of the digital trade, it has changed a lot. Any customer would come to, well, even still today, you come to a website, uh, to an online store, and you're just greeted by the exactly same front page just about anyone else. And some websites would go as far as to try to figure out what you have bought before, and then based on what you have bought before, uh, the website will give you some recommendations. How lame it is compared with, with what second-hand car salesman does. He doesn't have any prior information about you. He will just look at you, and from the first impressions, from the little pieces of data he can squeeze out from your behavior, your... Um, your tone of voice, how you behave, how you dress, and so on. He'll kind of try to create your psychological profile. And then, well, in psychology and in marketing, we do uh, some profiling, some psychological profiling as, profiling as well. Uh, to large extent, uh, using questionnaires, which give you some insight into uh, whom you're dealing with. But of course, questionnaires are pretty unwieldy. Uh, they're pretty inconvenient when it comes to application. You cannot really uh, hand out a little short personality and IQ questionnaire to any consumer that comes to uh, Argos. Uh, not only they will be a bit uh, uh, spooked, but uh, uh, it would just take an enormous amount of time. No one would have time for that. Uh, but you may have noticed that I mentioned before that the car salesman was able to do exactly the same thing without really using any psychological tools. It was just based on the first impression and this conversation that he or she had with a potential customer. 
And as it was mentioned today many times, we have this data available. You have exactly the same data, have much more actually, in fact, than the car salesman had online. Everything you do, guys, is recorded by your tablet, PC, your Google account, your Twitter account, by your cell phone, your mobile phone that is with you all the time. You can go back in a history a long way. You can check someone's purchase history many months back. You can check what this person was doing on Facebook, what this person was tweeting about. If the person will give you access to this kind of information, you can even go and read this person's emails long way back. And of course, it all sounds creepy, and I'll come back to it in a second. There's definitely a big problem with kind of convincing people that this is all for their benefit. And I think that the best way actually to convince them that it's all for their benefit is actually use it for their benefit and don't use it to do um, creepy stuff. Uh, but you would agree with me that loads, loads of information we have already available about each and every customer that comes to your online store or offline store. Uh, you have um, uh, uh, loyalty cards, you, have, you can identify people by the credit card or uh, in this spooky way using a face, what was it, a face, the camera that was taking a picture and, and matching it with your uh, Facebook profile. Uh, so at the psychometric center where we kind of, our business, our expertise is in developing tools that allow you to measure psychological traits, we have decided to build on it and develop a quite unusual questionnaire, quite unusual psychometric tool that allows you to create a very detailed psychodemographic profile of an individual based simply on a digital footprint. And it happens in a fraction of the, on the, of the second. How it works is the colors uh, went a bit crazy, but I guess we can, we can deal with black and white. Uh, you get some data about an individual, whether it's his Facebook profile, it can be public data, uh, or his browsing history, his purchase history, his credit card records, whatever really you have access to, or whatever the customer wants to share with you. And the interesting notion here is that increasingly, uh, people would keep their data public. 40% of people on Facebook decide to keep their likes completely public. Anyone can see them. You don't need any special permission. And again, I would encourage you to inform the user what you're planning to do, and I'll, I'll kind of uh, build on it a bit uh, more later. Uh, but a lot of data is just available out there for you to grab. So you take this data, you translate it to, um, to Facebook Graph ID in terms of this tool. Why did we decide to use Facebook Graph ID? Simply because just about anything uh, in the digital and non-digital world is present somewhere on Facebook Graph so would have a Facebook graph, Facebook graph ID. So we kind of there are, no, um, there are no doubts about what we're actually talking about. So if someone bought Oreo or likes Oreo, you just give me the number, uh, you send it to my API, which is uh, just a kind of programmer's thing, a computer that's, uh, uh, that is uh, probably hosted by, uh, by our hosts here. Um, and this computer will give you back a detailed psychodemographic uh, profile of an individual in a fraction of the second. And this is a, an example of an application, a very simple one. This is simply a one-click personality questionnaire. People love getting feedback on their personality and other psychological traits. And we decided to build a very simple demo. And this demo it went live the first week. We had one million people coming to this website to check out their personality, which shows how interested people are in profiling, profiling like that. And there's one more interesting uh, bit that I want to build on here at this moment, is that if your predictions related to what people want to buy, if your predictions about how you should kind of design the website for them, how you should shape the message, if those predictions are based on some very complicated systems designed by computer scientists or marketing companies based on 230 different consumer clusters, it's very difficult to communicate to your consumer, hey, this is why I'm showing you this. This is why I'm selling you this product. It's very difficult because often actually you don't even know because the prediction mechanism will be kind of some kind of a black box that doesn't really tell you why or kind of tells you but in a non-human understandable way why actually this product was, was selected for this consumer. 
if you use psychological traits, if you use psychological nomenclature, you can say, I selected this product for you, I selected this uh, little uh, palm top here because you seem to me to be very liberal and open to experience and also well organized. So I figured that you will actually enjoy this product. So not only person is, oh, actually it makes sense. That's who I am. People like getting feedback on who they are. People will respect you for trying to understand them better. But also you actually give them a chance to, cor chance to correct you. You can say, hey, if you disagree with this profile I just created for you, just click here, tell me who you really are, who you believe you are, and I will adjust my recommendations because those recommendations at the end of the day are to make your life better and me sell more stuff. Um, but if you kind of stress that, stress the kind of human factor in it, people really like um, the fact that you're kind of learning more about them. And one million visitors to this website proves it. And I actually encourage you guys to go there. We don't record any data here. Um, uh, you can just uh, visit youarewhatyoulike.com and in a fraction of a second you will learn your personality profile. Then, of course, I was asked for case studies, and in the academia, our case studies are publications. We publish papers. Uh, so I actually present you a little case study here that shows how accurate those predictions are. So what we decided to do, we took uh, 60,000 US Facebook users. For those users, we knew the ground truth. We knew their actual personality scores, their actual IQ scores. We knew their gender age whether they take drugs or not, what's their sexual orientation. We basically knew loads about them. And we ran them through our mo run them, those guys through our model. I will, there's an equation, so if you guys have any tricky questions at the end of this presentation, I'll come back to this equation. Um, a bit spooky here, right? We actually tried to predict those traits that people are least likely to reveal. And the study showed that using a very generic digital footprint, look, Facebook likes, we used Facebook likes here, Facebook, on Facebook likes, like people are pretty public, like you know that your friends will see your Facebook likes. So you don't like anything kinky. You don't like anything you wouldn't really like to show to your friends, right? If you would use different kinds of signal, like if you have access to actually what people buy and then what time and why did they buy those flowers when they visited other city and then paid for a fancy uh, dinner at the restaurant, uh, you can learn much more about those individuals that potentially from Facebook likes. So kind of this illustrates perhaps not the traits that you would like to predict in your kind of marketing environment, but it shows you that even very intimate and personal traits are very highly predictable. And then predicting stuff like whether you prefer Coca-Cola or Pepsi, or whether you buy, prefer this book to the other, is just so much more simple. Um, some more examples. We also predicted age, 0.75, accuracy, uh, personality and intelligence. Those accuracies here, they are comparable with the accuracy of the short personality and IQ questionnaire. <laughs>